our series, uh, You Are a Theologian. Uh, let's just quickly just kind of like discuss quickly about love and then next week we'll start with our series because it has become apparent when you look at the statistics as far as divorce is concerned that the world has dismally failed at engaging love. The, the, what the world has sold to us as the concept of love, the principles of love, the ideas of love, the stuff that is said to be love, it, we are coming to the realization that it's not working. The ideas that have been put forward to us and the ideas that we are trying to implement, the divorce rate has indicates, is indication that it is not working, Barcelona. The number of excess you have with all the books you have read should be an indication that it's not working. The number of your, your dream men and your dream women who have come in and gone, it must be an indication that these concepts are not working. The love of your lives that you have had, are you a cat? How many lives do you have? The amount of love of your lives you have had until now is an indication that the principles upon which you are basing that love does not work. Can we agree on that? The, the amount of people you have given your world to. Now what are we left with? Because you have given your world to people and right now that's why you think you are depressed can't you are confused because you someone left with your world. Someone has left with your world because you gave them your world because that's, those are the principles of this world that we are living in. And to, I think we need to come to a realization and an agreement. It's not working. And, and as, we, as we come to that, we must, as we break up, it's, it's not you. It's not me either. Is the principles we are trying to apply. It's not you. It's not me. It's the principle we are trying to foundation this love upon. Because the Bible says God is love. Then if, if God is not part of that love, what, what is it? What, what is it? And that's what we want to talk about, the God kind of love. The God kind of love. If you are single, you are at the right place. If you are married, you are at the right place. If you are searching, you are at the right place. If you are not searching, you are at the right place. There is everything for everyone today. Everyone will live here with something in their pocket. Amen. I love the excitement and the enthusiasm. It's great. It's great. What is love according to dictionaries and uh, the, 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 the definitions of this world? It says, love is an intense feeling of deep affection. Naran. Imagine. So I must, I must give my world to an intense feeling. Do you understand that in the morning when I don't want to go to work, I have an intense feeling? How many of us are like, I, I have an intense feeling I don't want to go to work. And then you get in the shower and as you're shower, you're doing your stuff and then the feelings catch up. And then the feelings have changed. You have an intense feeling to eat junk food in the middle of the night. We have an intense feeling to do a lot of crazy things. Imagine if you're going to base your whole life on an intense feeling. And can I tell you, you have an intense feeling for her today until someone who looks better than her comes along and then you have an intense feeling for that one as well. How many intense feelings? Imagine if you're going to give someone your to heaven to hold till death do us part because of an intense feeling. Can I tell you, when, when you have a discussion, the intense feeling goes away. In fact, you have intense feelings. It's just not of affection. It's other intense feelings. Now imagine if you are going to base this life-altering decision on an intense feeling. 
Sometimes when you are still infatuated, don't get into the relationship. Allow the feelings to subside. Because as the feelings subside, the brain starts working. Oftentimes when the feelings are intense, the brain is, is low shading. There's nothing. Number two, great interest and pleasure in something. Imagine. Imagine someone wants to, they say, I want to spend the rest of my life with you because I am interested in you. But whom? You know how many things I'm interested in? It's not sustainable. Number three, a like or an enjoyment of something very much. Strong affection for another rising from kinship or personal ties. It just sounds complicated. So the, the, you, you realize that the definition of love in this world is based on temporal things. It is based on temporal things. And that is why it does not last. That's why many of us, we got into it because of the temporal nice things. And I'm not saying it should not be nice. But nice can be the ultimate reason why we want to have a loving relationship. There must be something better. There must be something stronger. Let's look at the Bible. The first mention of the word love is found in Genesis 22. Let's see. The Bible says, after all this, God tested Abraham. Number one, love is going to test you. If love cannot be tested, it cannot be trusted. Today, you are, you are deeply in love with someone. You have not tested anything. Yet, you claim to be deeply in love. There's, there, there hasn't, you, listen, when Zimasa says he loves Kuche, it's because when I sit with them, they talk to us. It's because of the testing that they have experienced that now they, are, they see this love is real. When I, 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 I say, stop, wait, calm down. It, there's, not, there's not been it. Wait until there's a testing. Before you, you abandon yourself and say, oh, I'm in love. You are, you are at best, you are in like. At best. He says, and God tested Abraham. And God said, Abraham. God, and then Abraham said, yes. Which translation is this one? <laughs> Abraham said, yes. Abraham answered, I am listening. Hi. And he said, take your dear son Isaac whom you love and go to the land of Moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will point you to the first thing I want to tell you is that love is sacrificial love that God and the last mention of the word love it's in Revelations 12 verses 11 and the Bible says they defeated him through the blood of the lamb and the word of their witness. They went in love with themselves and they were willing to die for Christ. So love in its inception is that of what? Of sacrifice. Love in its ending is that of what? Of sacrifice. Love, when someone says to you, I love you, you are saying, you are saying I want to die. I am prepared to die. Today, we have come to relationships because we want to be happy, not because we are prepared to die. And that is why when the happiness goes, because happiness, Bazalwani, it comes and it goes. Happiness comes and it goes. The, 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 that's why the Bible introduces us to love as a matter of sacrifice and not as a matter of satisfaction. Is it not supposed to be satisfying? It is meant to be satisfying. But the core basis of it is that love is sacrificial. We don't come into a love relationship to do a 50-50. You give me 50%, I give you 50%. We come into it to do a 100-100. I sacrifice 100% and you sacrifice 100%. When we have discussions, it's because someone is not willing to die. Amen. Amen. 
I don't like that amen. <laughs> Oftentimes, relationships and, and, and love relationships, are, are, are they die because people are not willing to die. Because the nature of it is that it's either you are going to die or it is going to die. But the, the, the reason they are not sustainable is because we are not willing to die. It is you must accept me just as I am. No, how? Because I know that even myself, I would not accept me just as I am. Why is it that you want someone else to accept you just as you are when you have not accepted yourself as you are? So now must accept the rubbish you are not willing to accept. Because we as people, there are stuff in our lives that we are always not happy about. And we're like, you know, I, would, I wish I could do better here, yeah, yeah. Yet you go and tell someone, you, but, but you must accept it just as I am. How? When you have not accepted yourself just as you are. The love that God exemplifies is that of waking up in the morning and say, how can I die for this woman? It's for her waking up in the morning and say, how can I die for this man? And guess what? When we are both dead, that relationship is most alive. When we are most, when we are both dead, it is, what often breaks it is when the one party is dead and the other one is fully alive. The other one is dead. You are a sacrificial lamb. The other one is the one who is sacrificing you. You, you were never meant to be a sacrificial lamp in a relationship at the hands of another. It is, sacri it is sacrificial. A sacrificial love, it wants something for you, not something from you. They wake up in the morning as a husband, as a wife, as a friend, as an aunt, anyone who claims to love you. They are, that love is based on what they want for you, not what they want from you. Isn't it funny that we claim to love the church of God, but we only come to get from it? I'm talking to you. Because God exemplifies love in John 3, 16. It says, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he. But we come into love relationships to come and get. When was the last time you woke up in the morning and say, how can I give? When was the last time you sat with your partner, your friend, your spouse and asked them, am I giving you enough? Not, you are not giving me enough. You are not doing this. Hey, I want this. You know, you are not doing one, two, three. When was the last time you asked them, listen, am I giving you well? No, Bazalwana, I'm man. I'm talking about like, like. <laughs> when, when was the last time when you had a conversation with your, with your loved one, your spouse, your friend, your sister, wherever love exists, where you ask them, listen, am I loving you well? Or is it always but you are not doing this. You are not doing this. I don't like this. I don't like that. When was the last time you asked them, listen, is the way I'm loving you exemplifying the love of God? Because you are concerned about what the other person is doing, which is out of your control. You are, while you should be concerned about what are you doing. So, the Bible starts with love that sacrifices and it ends with a love that sacrifices. And you must understand, it's a relationship between Christ and the church. So in Genesis, it's exemplifying Christ dying for us on the cross. In Revelation, it exemplifies us dying to ourselves. Us dying to ourselves. But typical, Christ has died for us and there's some of us who are still living for ourselves. 
And that's why even the worldly relationships, they fail. Because one has died for the other and the other one is still living for themselves. It creates a very challenging, challenging situ- situation. John 15 verses 3 says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone will lay down his life for, for, his, for his friend. This God kind of love is sacrificial. It does not want something from you, it wants something for you. Mark Betterson says, if you want to impact someone's life, love them when they are least expecting it and when they are least deserving it. Love them when they are least expecting it and love them when they are least deserving of it. That's the, sec- that's the God kind of love. Because Bazalwani, he loved us. The, the relationships today do not sustain because we love people at their best and despise them at their worst. When they are at their best, we love them. When we ask them, what do you love about me? Oh, you are a visionary. Oh, you are this. Oh, you are that. Oh, you are, you are, you, you are a hunk. Hey, you have six packs. You are this. You are tall, tall, dark, and handsome. Let me tell you, that, that darkness as the age goes, it's, it becomes pitch dark. You see, now it looks very nice because the skin is so smooth. That time is coming where the darkness is going to look now like it got a pizza is chilling. Yeah. Zimasa didn't fall for that. She fell for nice stuff. Now look at what she's stuck with now. <laughs> you forgive me. That's <laughs> good. Let's say he forgives me. The, the, the nature of it, Bazalwani, is that the kind of love that God has for us is not dependent on our best performance. But we have made the standard of this world love that is conditional and it's based on one's best performance. And I say, I am going to do my best. But the question is, will you love me at my worst? I am going to do my best. But when I can't, because I will not always be at my best. Will you still love me still? Bob Jeff says, Selfless love is always costly. Fear cannot afford it. Pride does not understand it. But friends never forget it. Pride cannot do selfless love. Because selfless love says even after a discussion, you still need to love. You still need to love. And you know, yesterday I had a very very profound speaker just speaking about you know, just relationships in general. And, and he says, you know, what we find in the world today is that someone shares you and then you, you, you say yes. And immediately you have, not, you, you don't, you have not spent time to understand them. And they are, because that's the nature of love, their problems become your problem. But you don't even know this person. Because you are, you, have, you, are not, you are not assured of God's love for you that anything that resembles it, you will eat. Here's a piece of advice. If you have not settled in, your, in God's love for you, don't get into a relationship. Because you don't have a benchmark. Your benchmark is very low. If you have not found your identity and yourself and who you are, in who God says you are. Relationship is not part of your curriculum at the moment. Go and understand what does it mean to be loved by God. Because you see what's the other challenge. If you have not experienced what it is to be loved by God, you come into the relationship and expect that person to fill a place that can only be filled by God. And you put pressure on that relationship. Now this person must be your world. They can't. God only can be your world. Now this person must come and all of your problems must go away. No. They have come to add to your problems. Because they are coming with their own problems. But when we have found ourselves in the love of God for us. We know the benchmark of what love is. 
And we are able then to build healthier relationships. The, the challenge with the relationships today is that for many people, they are an escape. They are an escape. We are hoping that once we get into them, all our life's problems will disappear. Yes, I was alone. I was alone. I had less problems. Less discussions. I was discussing just with myself. It was just me, myself, and I. Just, okay, we are going to have another discussion after this. <laughs> the nature of love, because it is sacrificial, is going to demand from you to die. And if you are selfish, don't even think about it. Love is not for selfish people. It's for selfless people. It's not. Don't, don't go there. Stay with yourself, with your loving. They, it's me, myself, and I. It's, no. You know, I love myself, and as a result, you must, oh, yeah, must what? You love yourself, well done. That's it. It ends there. But now, we, 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 we sometimes get into love as a, as a way of an escape. Love number two, godly kind of, so number one, the godly kind of love is sacrificial. Number two, the God kind of love loves in spite of, not because of. Romans 5 kind of puts a, a, a benchmark for us on how to do love. Romans 5 verses 6 to 8, you know this is my favorite scripture. It says, Christ arrived right on time to make things happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presents himself as a, uh, for this sacrificial death when we were too weak, too rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. Even if we had not been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person we're dying for. And we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatsoever to him. Don't get into a relationship with someone who's going to make you feel like they're doing you a favor by loving you. You must tell them, Guti Lambuya kona bayang tand. Where I come from, I am loved. You see, when you are when you are convinced about God's love for you, you are not gonna eat anything else, just anything that comes your way. You don't get excited by just anything. Anyone comes and say, Hey, I, I love you, I love you. You don't get excited because you understand what love is. You're like, listen. Where I come from, I was a mess. They loved me anyway. I'm not, you are not going to make me feel small because I have a past. God loves me with my past. If you are not, if you can't handle that, I hear. Because that's the nature of people of this world. They're going, people are prayer. They, they pray on people, not their prayer. They pray on, on our weaknesses. Because now you are a single mother. You have children. They want you to accept the lowest level of love because you are not deserving of love. They're like, hey, when I was a single mother, I, 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 I was, God, my God loved me with my children, with my child, with my mess, with my everything. I'm not here craving for love. I come from love. I understand what love is. So I'm not going to take this rubbish that you are trying to present me with. I was loved even at my, at my lowest. Because that's the nature of people. Now, they're gonna, now you, are, you are not working. Now you're not working. They must treat you like a doormat. Listen, Bazalan. In that relationship, you must behave like you, you guys are bringing the same amount of money. Because you understand that. Because you understand And can I tell you, when you come from love, you don't also put pressure on someone else to fulfill that thing. Then it's a, it's a nice relationship, man. It's a nice relationship. Now, because you, have, you are not convinced of God's love for you, now this, this person, this guy or girl, needs to overcompensate because everything they do when they sneeze, oh, you don't love me anymore, I say. 
They come back a bit later from work. Oh, you were, you, you were not loving because now you have not found yourself in the love of Christ. And now you're putting pressure on this person. They can't do anything because now they must make sure, Guti, hey, you are secured. Like being in love with someone who's insecure is work. Yala pizza is work. Because now, I, regardless of what you're going to do, my sister, that place can only be filled by the love of God. He is always going to feel insecure until that God has played, his love has indwelt in them. There is nothing you are going to do that will satisfy them. And the next thing what they will do is they will put you in a prison because the only way they can be assured of you that you love them is when they are controlling you. Because they are not sick. They don't understand what love is. So they need to go. Because for you when, they, when you are next to them and you are here, that, that's, only place, that's the only time they are secured. Because when they got into a relationship, it was supposed to heal them and it's not healing them. Because that was never the idea of a relationship. It was never meant to be a healing agent. Babang lidi doctor no lidi nurse. I will I will heal him. I will fix him. If you can fix your metric marks. Gazala, gazala. Gazala. I can't tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to No one must come to complete you. Because when they leave, that which was completing you is gone. Romans 5 gives us the genesis of where our departure in our quest for love must come from. It must come from understanding that, man, at my lowest, at my worst, I was loved by God. And so I will not accept anything that does not resemble that. As two people who know that at our lowest, God loved us. And in that, you can love someone when they are at their lowest. Because you understood that it was not your shiny little whatever that made you lovable to God. Tim Keller says in his book, uh, The Meaning of Marriage, he says, to be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known and not loved is our greatest fear. But to be fully known and truly loved well, a lot, uh, well, a lot like being loved by God. It is what we need more than anything. It liberates us from pretense, humbles us out of our self-righteousness, and uh, fortifies us for any difficulty life will throw at us. If you are still feeling the sense of pretense while you are in that relationship, get out. Because the nature of sacrificial love is that you should be able to be completely transparent and feel no shame. And feel no shame. To be fully known and loved anyway. That is what God wants us to experience. That's why when we read the Bible in Genesis 2, the first quality that the Bible presents to us about marriage is that they were naked and not ashamed. Because the nature of a loving relationship is that we should get naked and not feel shame. And we're not talking about physical nakedness. We're talking about just being completely transparent. And if you still have places in your life that you are not willing to expose, you are not ready for a love relationship. If you are still trying to play hide and seek, stay alone, my sister and my brother. Be, be by yourself. It's not wrong as well. It's not wrong to be alone. Ne? Single people, you are not cursed. 
It's okay. You are perfectly fine. You are perfectly fine. You know, yesterday I said to the, the peop- some, some people, I said, singleness is not a bus stop where you are waiting for marriage. It is a bus itself. It's moving. It's a party bus. Have fun. Because this, other, and when the time comes, you get out of that bus and you climb onto the marriage bus. There. Enjoy the party bus. There you are in a party bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enjoy the party bus. Our bus, it will pass, you won't even hear anything because we are discussing. There we are having discussions. You see, there you are having fun. Now, some of you, you are, you, you are missing the single bus because you are waiting at the at the, at, the, at the marriage, you're waiting at the bus stop, waiting for, for the marriage bus. And when it comes, we look at, we're like, ah, ah when I, you, are, you are supposed to be in that bus. When I and your person, you must get off that bus together. They are not in here. Because, yes. 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 Hey, they say I must speak closer. Let me just stick to English. So, Bazalon, enjoy your season of singleness. Jesus was single when he died for the world. Number two, number three, the, the God kind of love does not keep us from the word of God, but it keeps us in the word of God. John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered and said, if you love me, you will keep my word. The nature of love, Bazalwan, a godly kind of love, it pushes you closer and closer to the word of God, not away from it. It pushes you closer and closer. It doesn't just ask you, so what are your dreams and aspirations? It asks you, so what is your relationship with God? What is your view of God? What is your view of mercy and grace? What is your view of salvation? What is your view of all these things? It just doesn't ask you, what is your favorite color? After you know my favorite color, what's going to happen? We need to, we need, we need, Singles, you must revisit the questions you are asking on dates. It can't be that you're asking me about my favorite color. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you just something, because most of us men, we don't have favorite colors. We just have, we just, we have favorite colors because of you. We never, you are not going to find a single guy just uh, waking up in the morning and say, I have a favorite color. You have been taking out blue clothes for me all the time. You are buying me blue. It ends up being my favorite color. <laughs> See, Kutle is wearing blue and blue. I think Kutle loves blue. The master loves blue. Kutle wabatu. Maybe rata pink. You want to wear blue no? Kaza ala wazalwa ni kala rata wazima. Yee, shame. In second service, I don't know who I'm going to talk about because you won't be here. <laughs> if they claim to love God, then they keep his word. And if they don't keep his word, then they don't love God. And if they don't love God, they have no business loving you. If they don't love God, they have no business loving you because they won't love you the way God intends for them to love you. If someone does not love God, no, for this, he, he's kind. Does he love God? No, he is. Does he love God? No, he's spiritual. Hey, my sister. Does he love God? Is he saved? Like, is he saved? Like, does he really love Jesus? No, but he is kind. He's fine. It's all good. Does he love God? Because, Basalwani, you want a husband, a wife, a friend, who when you are not there, there's a God consciousness that will speak to them. That you don't have to police them around. 
You don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and ask yourself, what are they doing? Because you know that they are so convicted by the love of God that they are, it's not you who is going to convict them, but it's the love of God. Because there will be time where it's in Cape Town or she's in New York or wherever you are not there. In that moment, you cannot trust your ability or your investigative skills. In that moment, there must be, you must know that there is a, this man knows God and knows the Holy Spirit. That is what I'm going to, I will communicate with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit lives in them. You are able to sit at your house and say, my wife is somewhere, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is in me, I charge you right now. It's about Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit. <laughs> falls down. Holy Spirit says, hey, what are you doing? Because the same spirit that is in you is in them. But if the same spirit is not, you can't even pray. What are you praying? Because if they are not born again, Basalwani, you can pray all you want. They are not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Your prayers are not going to work. Praying for someone who is not born again is a waste of your time. They are not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He's not going to enforce them in the, in, He's not going to enforce himself in them when they have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. What you need to be praying for is that may God please cha- may this person accept you. Because only after they have sec- accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can the Holy Spirit start working in their lives. Now you are, you, are, you are here in a relationship and you are asking that, oh, Holy Spirit, I hope that he's behaving there in vendor. Huh? <laughs> and Holy Spirit says, if me, if Jesus Christ dying for them in the cross could not convince them to give up their lives, what else is going to? What else is going to stop them from behaving anyhow when they are there? When the love of Christ on the cross was not enough. And that's why the Bible says, do not be yukali yoked. How are you from this? Me, I'm a prayer warrior. I will pray. You become a prey. Love must help you obey God. And not hinder you from obeying God. John 3, 33 to 35. Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way as I loved you. See God does not leave the loving one another to our own discretion. He says love one another in the same way. He says I've given you a pattern. In the same way. And how did he love us? He loved us to the point of death so he doesn't give he doesn't say love one another and figure out what the other one likes and what the other one does not like we we you you see in relationships whose love language must you know more is that of the other person but we do it the other way around it is my love language that must be satisfied. In fact, we shouldn't be considered, we shouldn't be concerned about our needs being met. We should be concerned about the meeting the needs of others. In the same way, they should be concerned about meeting our needs. Guys, do you understand that everyone, if everyone just plays their part, we're happy. It's it, like, it's really simple. But now it's about, hey, if you move left, I move right. If you move, hey, hey. It's about love. So, lastly, love does not condemn, it covers. First Peter 4, 8. Most important of all, continue to show deep love to one another. For love covers a multitude of sin. When the prodigal son had went away and he remembered who he was. The Bible, Luke 15 verses 20 says, so he returned home to his father 
And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming and filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. Pastor love is supposed to make us feel secure. It's not supposed to be an, an enduring experience. And I'm saying this because there's a lot of us who are in enduring experiences and we think that is what love is. In a relationship, you must die to yourself. You must not get killed. There is a huge difference between deciding to die to yourself and being killed by the selfishness of another person. It's not, you, you are not expressing love by being, by being killed. You, it, the, the dying must be a voluntary action from your part. Not an action being killed by another. That's not the kind of love God wants you to be and to have. The one that devalues you when, you, when you leave that place, you feel bad about yourself. You feel small, you feel, you feel used, you feel unfulfilled, you feel, you feel, you know, degraded. No. It says, love covers a multitude of sins. If it is making you feel insecure because of your past mistake, it does not represent the kind of love God wants you to have. It doesn't. Because if they're going to love you the way he loved you, the Bible says, while you are still a sinner, he loved you. Do you understand why the prodigal son could not continue to eat with pigs? The Bible says, and he remembered. There is a remembrance that needs to, ha that needs to happen. And can I tell you, that some of us, we are only in relationships because we have amnesia. We have forgotten who we are in God. That boyfriend of yours, he better hope that you never remember who you are in God. Because that's the day you're going to live. That wife of yours, that they better hope you don't because there is something that happens in a person when they remember who they are in God. There's some stuff. This person, this prodigal son, he was eating with pigs, but when he remembered his father, he's like, I'm oh, in my father's house. Even servants are eating better than this. And you will wake up in that relationship where you are enduring. You're like, No, man, in my father's house. Even those that are by themselves, they are living better than this. And you realize, no, actually being alone is not that bad. This one is rubbish. This one, I'm not going to take this. And have a conversation. Those that are married, you have a conversation. You're like, listen, man, this that we have been doing here is not working. We need to change this. I need to make that clear because some are thinking, I'm, I'm saying you must go and say you are leaving. Come down. It's never too late to change your marriage. It's never too late to get a new spouse in the same person. You sit down with them and says, but what we're doing here is not what God has designed for us to do. The way we're loving each other, this is not how God wants us to do it. Like, like, I don't want to be married here anymore. I still want you, but this marriage, I want a, a new marriage. It's never too late to have that conversation. Where you're like, we're, we're divorcing this. We're not divorcing each other. We're divorcing this version of our marriage. It's, it's not working. We step into something, a sacrificial kind of love. A one that promotes, that loves in spite of. A one that, that, that brings us closer to the word of God than away from it. A one where we don't have to live with insecurity and accept it. That there's some of you who are enduring. You have been married for 15 years. They, 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 go and get a divorce. Go today. Go and just say, my wife, we're divorcing this version of our marriage. 
We're not, we, we can't live like this. There is something better. We don't have to endure it because we have been doing it for 15 years, 20 years, or whatever years. No. We stop it here. Let's do Then tomorrow is your first day of being married. You even find a new anniversary. You renew your vows. You don't have to have the party. You renew your vows in front of your children. In your own house. At a dinner table. And you say, guys, we, we want to show you a new kind of marriage. We want to show you a new kind of love. We are sorry for what we have shown you until now. This is not godly. This is not what God had in mind when he said, we, we want to show you. And then you're like, around the table, dinner, you don't have to do a lot. You're like, what, what, this is a wedding. It's a new wedding. And you start having the kind of relationship that God wants you to have. It is possible. Father, we want to thank you for relationships. For love. It comes from you. May you help restore where there is brokenness. May you help rebuild where there is brokenness. May you help refresh where there is staleness. May we find our sense of identity with and being loved in you first. To know that regardless of our messy past, we are still worthy of sacrificial love. And may we not accept anything else that does not look like the kind of love you want us to have. May we not settle for anything else that does not look like the kind of love you want us to have. May we be rooted so much in, a, in your love for us that we are not going to settle for anything that does not look like the love that you have for us. We thank you, we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.